Met Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you, uh, as I preach this morning, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Do we know the God that Christ proclaims? Let me paraphrase from Paul's letter to the Romans today, chapter 10, verse 14. How are we to call on one in whom we have not believed? How are we to believe in one of whom we have never heard? How are we to hear without someone to proclaim? There is a God in which we place our faith as Christians and as Episcopalians. Every week, in fact, after the sermon, just in case there was a bit of heresy, we stand up and we recite the faith of the church in the Nicene Creed, proclaiming God is almighty. The Gospels, the letters, the Old Testament all point to just such a belief. Jesus points to the ancient faith in this almighty God, and so the church points to this truth. And I wonder, though, do we know this God who is almighty, who we proclaim as almighty? In the words of Inigo Montoya, in the movie The Princess Bride, he says, you keep using that word, I'll insert almighty, but I do not think it means what you think it means. You see, in daily usage, we think almighty means to have all the might, having unlimited power, to be omnipotent, to uh, be potent, to be filled with power, and then to influence and act in the moment. It is power that is meant to be used. In the creed, we are saying something slightly different. We believe in God who is ruler of all, who is Lord of hosts. There are no other rulers and lords. So any idea that when we use that language that we are speaking of earthly lords and earthly hosts and earthly rulers, we are not. We are speaking of a God who is beyond, above, outside of all of that. The God we proclaim is a God who created, sustains, and will be present at the end of all things. We say, and maybe you've heard, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, a God of all possibility, not limited, and this is important, not limited to the observable. However, on a regular basis, our belief is something quickly discarded, especially when things don't go our way. We lose our faith in a God who is almighty when God doesn't do what we ask. When God, with all that untapped power, doesn't act. It is natural to think this way. (laughs) It is normal. It is a way in which, in very subtle and unthought ways, the Almighty God slips from our understanding and faithful proclamation into obsolescence. We leave God as almighty but powerless. We say that this Almighty God is like a clockmaker even. It's just wound everything up and walked away. That is not what we're proclaiming. And there is an almighty God. Why not use God's power then to save the sick, to help the drowning, to stop wars? Why do bad things happen to the faithful, to good people? 
These are important questions. Because when a family member or friend dies, and when an accident happens, or we desire help and aid, and we need God to act, we fumble with responses like, God answers prayers, but not always in the way we want. Or, God needed a new angel in the choir. God does not need new angels in the choir. The God who is almighty doesn't actually need anything. We say God blessed us when our house does not flood or something good happens. Oh, I'm so blessed, we utter without a thought. But sending a subtle message that others who are not blessed live terrible lives because of something that they have deserved. It's religious violence in some way. All of these statements are naive at best. And at the worst, they are spiritually and soulfully painful to hear if you're on the receiving end of them. For these answers are based on bad theology. Well, at least not Episcopal theology. Not orthodox theology about a God who withholds unjustly and hurts others or shames us. This is not the God that we're proclaiming when we say God is almighty. It is a God who is holy other. Don't even try to pull that down. <laughs> but it is not a God who intends our pain or suffering. Too often, this is the God that we hear about, but this is not the God Almighty that the church has faith in. The God who is God of all, who is unfathomable, greater than we might be able to think, a God of pure potential, of all power, all things, created a cosmos, and I want to say cosmos there because I want to think of the largest piece of creation, created a cosmos where there is freedom. There is a kind of autonomy given to life as a premise of all life's very existence. This includes freedom for us as human beings. Such freedom is designed in a way that God does not want to control it. It is not given as a freedom to be against God, though freedom does, in fact, include that option. But God has granted freedom for humanity to live a life for the God who is almighty and has given us all things. And for God's cosmos, to be for God's creation, to be for God's reign. It is true that our freedom has led us through the ages to worship lesser gods of wealth and privilege and to divine power that looks like our own, all as rivalries to this God, yet we return to speak here every Sunday of a God who is almighty, God who laid the foundations or the creation of the waters, the suns, the stars, and the planets in their courses, as one of our Eucharistic prayers proclaims. God came to us and revealed in Christ and Christ's ministry how we are to live a life that is for God. On this planet, natural disasters, cancer, accidents happen to the faithful and the unfaithful alike. The good, the bad, and the ugly alike. And sometimes our freedom leads to war and death and hurt and pain too. People's inhumanity to each other is not God's doing, but rather our freedom unleashed in the world with a lack of restraint on such human power and potential. We might say, why didn't God stop that war? Why didn't we stop that war? 
Why doesn't God help the poor? Why don't we help the poor? This is the question that Christ speaks to us. To be for God Almighty is to help the sick, the needy, those without families, the prisoners, the bound, and the abused, to free people who are captive. It is to reject the pain and suffering of our inhumanity as the normative course of things. In case you were wondering, this life that we are living is not the life that God intends. It is to reject pain and suffering. We are given freedom to fight against injustice. We are not meant to accept or excuse evil, but to reject acts that bring about evil, to confess when we sin, and don't do this work knowing full well that we also believe in Jesus Christ, who has allowed us to live another day after this confession of both faith and wrongdoing to be for God. We are given a freedom that is meant to accept or, or not to accept or excuse it in any way, especially when it seeks to destroy the creatures of God. Now, you might be saying, oh my gosh, the bishop got really political. No, this is the, this is the Bible. <laughs> I'll go to task with you all any day. I stand on the orthodox faith of this church going all the way back. Bring it on, because God intends us to be living a different life. And only when we understand and proclaim and speak about an almighty God do we become accountable for the lives we're actually living. Only then can you understand the long lists of ways we didn't act or did act this week and that they are unacceptable to a life lived for God. And God Almighty who has made all of the cosmos free and set before us freedom to live for God and thus for each other and the world our home. This is the God that we believe in the God of which we have heard, of which we speak to each Sunday and are invited to speak through our mouths, our lips, proclaiming this God and then acting upon this God's gift and grace to us the rest of the week. It is the God that I proclaim. It is the God that this church proclaims now and ever shall. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.